it's all tiny. Okay, cool. So we're just going to continue. Uh, 60 seconds in from NY Flicken or Nye Flicken. 72. 60 seconds in. Let's check it out. Boo. Ooh, it's a long one. Thanks for calling out the time. Looks neat. What do, what do we got here before I go too far? BMW 7 Series. Okay, neat. Okay, this is already looking really cool. All right, so right around now, you did say 60 seconds in. So it's this stuff. Um, assuming that you're talking about this material here, that looks so much more like After Effects than Cinema. Uh, having said that, uh, we could probably do some um, some interesting things here, probably relatively quickly, and uh, I will do that. We'll, we'll, well, let's see who made this. Plur plurry ver versum Okay, versum versum plurry versum neat. Uh, super neat looking. Uh, there's probably a bunch of other details. Creative director. Lots of people worked on this. Really cool looking piece. We didn't even get to check out the entire thing. But if we want to try and yank out a couple of interesting aspects of it in cinema, why don't we go ahead and jump on in and let's do some super duper simple MoGraphy type things. Um, why don't we... I'm going to keep it as simple and generic as possible, actually. I'm going to make a matrix object. We don't do that too often. But if I make a matrix object, we can turn it onto linear. What's great about the matrix object is it's pretty much just instant little cubes, and all they are is really a, a placeholder for position, scale, and rotation. So these won't actually render by themselves, but we can see all kind of the techniques, and then clone something else on top of it if we wanted to. Although if we do try and make it look a little bit like that, we might get lost. But I've set it to linear, and here's the space in between each one, and then now we can just set the count for how many we want. So those can really just start kind of piling up there. We... Um, so, of course, the super-duper basics just turn into, uh, you know what, we're almost inevitably going to be putting this in the corner. So, you know what, everything I just said about the matrix object, let's get rid of it because I can already think of multiple reasons why we would be jumping into the cloner. So, same deal, cube in the cloner. Uh, it's already set to linear. Let's put that on zero, put it off to the side, and make a whole bunch of them. We Okay, so... Uh, in here, this might be being driven by sound, and if it is, then we just would start using the sound effector. I'm going to assume it's just random motion. Uh, I don't have any kind of waveform or anything set up right now, so let's keep it simple. Um, some super duper basics. You could do something like the random effector, and the random effector itself, let's just say that we are uh, affecting just the scale and just the scale on Y. So you see we're going to get all these, and I'm even going to tell it to be an absolute scale, so they never go negative scale. So right now it's pure kind of randomness, and it'll just be stuck that way. If we go to the Effector tab and we have Random here, we have a couple different things we can click. First of all, uh, if we ch set this to Noise, then we're going to start getting a nice noise pattern. Um, now we might not be able to see it too well here, but you'll see there's a little bit more consistency here where it looks like we see a pattern going on. And we should be able to see that a lot more if we go to something like scale and start increasing our scale. And you can definitely see that, okay, these are now related to each other. And then we get our, our animation speed as well. So already we're getting something slightly, you know, something kind of similar to what they had. So we can do something like these nice big, uh, these big waves. Now these aren't scaled nearly as much as I'd want them to be. So this is all scaling from the center point. And if we look here, uh, it doesn't really seem to be from the center. It's pretty much from the bottom. And this is why I jumped over to the cloner, is what we can do is grab our cube and, well, two things. We can either make it editable and move the axis down, or we can just create a null object. And you see the null's right at zero. And now if I take my cube and I move it up so it looks like it's pretty much sitting on the floor, I'm not going to do it perfect. We put it right there kind of on the floor, put it in the null, and put the null in the cloner. Then now it has to scale from that point. So now when it's scaling up, these guys are all going to shoot up into the air and not push down. Now, the, the imperfection of me placing it is we're going to see a little variation on the bottom, but I'm going to continue to ignore that. So you see we get these nice waves traveling up and down, you know, just via the random effector. Now, we can use a random effector, and it's pretty great, but everything it's doing we can do even better if we were using the shader effector, of course. So I'm going to jump over to the shader effector. Uh, once again, I want it to be based off the of scale. I want it to be based on scale Y. And I want it to be absolute scale so it doesn't go negative. And now we can go into the shading tab. And in the shading tab, I can make a layer shader. 
and inside of that, I'm going to make a noise. Now, what's great about this is now we're getting tons and tons of control over exactly the way this works. So right now, our scale is pretty tiny, so we're seeing you know, all this variation. But once again, if we scale this up to something like 500, okay, 500 wasn't nearly enough, so I'm going to go to 5,000. Okay, well, once again, when you're not sure of a number, I love jumping, uh, you know, by, by uh, increments of 10, or not increments of 10, multiples of 10, um, go to the next order of magnitude, so then you can kind of find where it is. So this seems a little big, so I'm going to maybe split the difference, go to like 3,000, and now we can kind of see that pretty well. And we can crank up our contrast a little bit. Now we get a lot of control over the noise, like the way this noise looks. For instance, right now our animation speed is all just, it's pure randomness. Uh, it's just moving around, so we don't see any kind of pattern here. It's just, you know, sometimes waves go up, sometimes they go down. But we could actually get rid of that animation and turn on our movement. So we have uh, X, Y, Z, X is the first one, so I can turn on X, X, and now you'll see that the noise is, well, it's not so much animating as moving to the left. So, so now we can distinctly see that this is moving to the left. And that's all it's doing. No, like, no animation, just movement. And anyway, so now we could turn on animation speed and movement. And now these will both be animating and feel like they're traveling, traveling to the left. We could, of course, go the opposite direction by putting a negative number. So now we have like tons and tons of control over the way this is working. And what's great is we can start layering, it might be a little fast, so I'm gonna set that to about half the speed. We could, um, we can start really getting uh, minute control over the way these are traveling by making multiple noises. So let's make a second noise, because I, I like that scale, but I'm gonna turn it off and let's make a big giant one. So I'm gonna set that to like 10,000. So you see we're getting very big consistent motion. So I'm gonna increase this some more. Uh, give us some more time in the timeline. So now I can create a second noise, which I already did here. And now you see that would completely override, but I could do something like set that to overlay, or I could leave it on normal and maybe say 50%. So now we should be feeling those big motions, but then we also get these small ones. Keep in mind as we layer more and more on top of these, the more they're going to kind of average each other out, in which case we might want to push the overall scaling up. But uh, let's go further so I can illustrate the point even better. So if I make another noise, what I want to do with this one is make it quite small. Uh, let's go to like 500. So now that we're at 500, this is completely overriding everything you see they're moving across. It's getting, actually, it's because of the scale, it starts feeling quite jittery. So actually on this particular one, I'm not sure if this would work too well, but I actually am going to get rid of our movement on that one. So all we're seeing is this kind of random up and down. So that's pretty great. So let's say I wanted to layer that on top of the other ones as well. Well, I could just start pulling this back, and as I pull it back, we should start seeing more and more of what we used to have until I get to zero. So what that means is I can mix in just a little bit of this, and now what's, now what's great is we get these big overall waves, and then we get these nice consistent waves, and then on top of that is layered one more tiny little variation wave. So we start being able to layer those things up. We get some really, really minute control. Maybe we'll scale this all up a little bit more. Um, so we can start feeling those more, and even within the layer, even within the shader, we can go into the layer and do things like uh, we can create a gradient. So we can create a colorized map and recolorize everything. So I'm going to set this to black and white, which should pretty much be exactly what we were looking at. Not actually literally, because we'd have to set that to linear, and now this should be exactly what we were already seeing. But now you see, you know, now we can start increasing the contrast a little bit. So if I start pulling the black in, if we pull in the black a lot, you'll see that we actually start clipping out on the bottom so that stuff can bottom out. And if I were to start pulling in the white, we could start clipping out on the top. Now we have to find that sweet spot because it could be anywhere here. Once again, I said, as we layered those noises up, we were kind of sucking out the contrast. So we just have to pull in until we find that sweet spot. And if we really pull these in, then what's going to happen is it's almost always going to be entirely on the top or entirely on the bottom and quick transitions between them. And if we really pinch these in, then you should see that quite a bit where you'll, you'll barely see any transition between the two. So now this gradient is completely controlling uh, how, that, how this is functioning, which is really neat. Um, I, I like, uh, I think I like it peeking out on the bottom, but you know, the top never quite peeks out like that. So we get these nice patterns and now we can individually control each of those, how the frequencies add up on top of each other and you know, just the way all of that goes. Um, so that's working great. And then, uh, honestly, so it, it would just turn into doing stuff like that and starting to layer things up. What could be interesting would be if we were to change, for instance, perhaps, this, the grid. 
yeah, we set this to a grid, and I'm going to have no height, or only one on the height, and then on X, Y, Z, on Z we'll put two segments, but now we can make a whole bunch of these going across, and depending on the distance between them, then we can start layering these up kind of with depth, but because of the inherent, uh, like, the cloud of noise that this is traveling through, there will be some variation between the front and the back. So you see they're similar, but not identical. So, and the closer we pinch these together, if I grab this uh, little dot and I start pulling them closer together, once I get them right on top of each other, they should be nearly identical. And you'll see, yeah, like right there, you'll see that these guys are almost doing the exact same thing at the exact same time. And as that space spreads out just a little bit, then you start seeing more and more variation until like once we get to something like, like this, then they're all going to be almost unrelated. So uh, that's kind of a cool thing where you can start layering these things up like this. Uh, this is going to start slowing down if we're not careful. But we can start adding a series of these, and you can get some really nice patterning uh, and layering going on that. That's looking pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, we can start texturing these slightly differently, layering them all up. Um, let's see what some things are we could potentially do. If we were to, yeah, let's do it because this is, this, is, this is fun so far. It's kind of just weird and... Uh, fun and abstract. I'm going to make a new material. We're going to keep this simple. I want it to render fast. So I'm going to turn off reflectance right now. I'm just going to turn on the color channel. And why don't we throw in a, let's see, what am I thinking? I'm thinking of a MoGraph or we could do a variation shader. Now I'm thinking MoGraph because then we can drive it via the noise. Um, let's do a MoGraph color shader. Okay, cool. The MoGraph color shader is going to need something to be based off of. So we're going to actually create I'm going to click on my cloner, so it's already selected, so it automatically adds. I'm going to go to MoGraph. I'm going to make another shader effector. Uh, and we are going to, to map this somehow. So how do we want to map it? Well, we could map it via just noise. I'm going to set it to... Um, I'm going to make another material, and we'll call this... Uh, I'm just going to call it Effector. It will be the Effector material. I'm going to go ahead and drop it directly on... I suppose our shader is fine. I'm going to drop on the shader, and I'm going to change it to flat. And I just like doing it this way because it's very visual. Uh, I can now rotate this texture until it's 90 degrees, and you can see it's flat on the ground. I want to scale it up, and that's fine for now. We might change it, but uh, that, that should do what I want it to do right now. So now I can go into maybe the luminance channel, turn off everything else. I'm going to throw a, a gradient in there. So now I've got a gradient the and I'm not sure if the orientation is correct so we'll just uh, we'll just see but uh, actually we'll be sure by dropping on here so you can see my gradient is actually the wrong orientation so if I click on this I can click on V and now you can see the way it's colored now we could technically do it like this um, but the reason uh, a, a very good reason not to and it's kind of hard to tell here but these are actually being applied kind of after the fact which means uh, even though this one kind of looks like a solid color, it's actually transitioning from one color to another, from one edge to the other, from one color to another on this edge. You can see it best here, I suppose. Like right here, you can definitely see it's lighter gray here, darker gray there. So if we actually wanted those to be a uniform color all the way through, then we're going to do drive this via the shader effector. So I'm going to move this back over to the shader effector, and I'm going to tell it... Uh, I'm going to tell the shader effector to look at the luminance channel of this material. And already you're seeing uh, some colors starting to filter on over into our object. Um, we want that to be obviously a little more blatant. Um, is this going to be that direct? Oh, also it's uh, affecting the scale, so I'm going to turn that off. So uh, now, now we're... Let's, I, got, I got to check to make sure our scale is correct. Okay, it is, it is kind of correct scale there. Just make sure it's pretty tight on it. Um, so uh, this layer shader should be affecting the alpha strength. I'm going to turn off alpha, and boom, that's what I wanted. So by turning off the alpha strength, you can now see we're going from white to this to, blah, 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 to black all the way over. And now these are actually solid colors. So that's great. But what's fun and the reason uh, for layering it up like this is now... Um, actually, that's just affecting the cloner directly, which is which is pretty neat. But now I can apply this material on top of it, and this material is now being fed via the color channel into a color shader, which means I can now take that and I can go into a colorizer, 
And now you can see that this is being colorized via this material. So now we have a very kind of direct control here. Before I get into that, I'm going to undo. Uh, we can continue to tinker with this and actually go into shader factor. And this all, you know, the shader effector here, which is being controlled by our shader named effector. Uh, but now we can start layering stuff up just like we did with this noise pattern. Um, in fact, um, I'm not sure if the world scale will match, but we could probably go into this shader, uh, steal this one, and then paste it into this effector. So I'm going to go layer and then paste. Actually, I'm pasting a layer shader into a layer shader, later, layer shader but you can do that. Um, and I probably wouldn't happen until Ren... Mm, doesn't seem to match, actually, because... Uh, if that was matching, then you'd think the higher it was, the brighter it would be. We could probably control that via the this, um, this shader effector. We could probably also have it affect color mode. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that because I'm just... Well, let's just keep it going a little bit random. Uh, my point here being is we can go and throw just, say, a random noise on top of this and say overlay. And now we can start seeing... Uh, it's best in the mid area. Maybe instead of overlay, we can do this. And on my noise, I'm pretty significantly going to crank up my contrast. And you're seeing that e like these are still mostly white in the front, and they're still mostly black in the back, but you start getting this randomness in this transition that's all about how much of this that we see through it. So we get a lot of very direct control over that, um, you know, all the way to complete randomness here. So just completely based on, you know, how do you want it to look. Um, so that's pretty cool. That's all in. That's all driving this, which goes into here, which goes into our color shader. Um, Render-wise, we could do something like uh, jump into our render settings. I'm going to change it to physical, and in physical, I'm going to change it to what is it? Fixed. Uh, and then we're just going to throw in some ambient occlusion. And I'm not sure what a good scale would be, but if I render, how, how big are these right now? If I click on one cube, it's about 20 big, which means 100 is actually a pretty significant size in here. You see we are getting that, uh, you know, it is falling off. So that might actually be a lot. We might need to go a lot smaller here. I'm going to say 50. Uh, okay, so now we get a little separation that way. And, of course, uh, we can start cranking up the quality of that ambient occlusion by perhaps going to our ambient occlusion subdivisions here and cranking that up. Um, so that's automatically going to start making that a lot smoother. It's just going to pop these things out from each other a little bit. We can throw a background in here just to uh, have it not be white or black, rather. Um, so those are all starting to scale up and look pretty neat. And it's just, you know, I don't know. At this point, we're just purely playing. Something I just, that popped in my head that I thought might look cool. I don't know how well this will work. but And I'm, and I'm actually kind of curious if this will maintain it. Um, but if we were to take a bend deformer... And this is all real geometry. So I'm going to take my bend deformer. I made sure to turn off my axis tool. I'm going to rotate our bend deformer uh, sideways. I'm going to make a child of the cloner. Actually, we got to be careful with that. Uh, I'm going to group our cloner, Alt-G. If I click, click it and hit Alt-G, and I can throw the bend in there. And now I'm going to hit Fit the Parent. And let's see if that works. Uh, no, it didn't, it didn't work because it's not acknowledging this as geometry. So if we take a connect object, and if I hold down... Uh, alt while I'm holding my object and I click it and it's going to make it a child automatically I don't need it to weld, that's just slowing things down, but anyway that should make it so that my bend is acknowledging it and I should be able to say fit the parent actually maybe it does just have to be a, a child of it to fit to parent fit the parent, well yeah okay in any case it, it did scale up to approximately the right length um, there's some interesting scaling going down left and right, but uh, let's let's ignore that um, but in any case, I don't actually need that connect. I just wanted it to be able to auto size my bend. So I want to see if I can now bend this thing. And my what I don't know if it will happen or not is if it will maintain the colors after it bends or if those are stuck in place. So I'm going to start bending it. And let's actually give it the correct rotation, which I want negative 90. And it does look like it's remembering, which is what I want it to happen. So uh, what happens at this point is now we can twist this whole guy around and we could make a really neat circle. Uh, or uh, what I might be even better is if I take this whole thing and I'm going to take my bend deformer and rotate it just a little off kilter just to show you what it looks like. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zero that out. And you can see my bend is just bent. It's actually just crooked on this overall object. And now when I bend it, you'll see that's kind of bending it not perfectly. Instead, it's kind of twirling it around. So that is kind of a nice, simple way of getting this guy to start spinning around and pinching right on top of itself. 
So that's pretty neat. Uh, the more I rotate it, the more separation there should be. We gotta use a really light touch because that can explode outward really easily. Um, probably spun around a few too many times. Uh, let's see, not quite as, there we go. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. So that's pretty neat. Uh, I'm liking the look of that. Uh, and what's neat is that the, all the noise and everything, hopefully because the bend is happening afterward, this is still all traveling around. So you see that it feels, see this wave feels like it's traveling around the outside of that. So that that is pretty awesome. Uh, I am definitely liking that. And then, um, let's say we want the middle to be taller. We can do something, uh, a bunch of things we could actually potentially do. Um, we could do it via the shader. We didn't really map a shader on there. So here's the thing. If we turn this off, we can always go back and edit it this way. So let's say, uh, and I'm not even sure which is the inside, honestly. Um, it's hard to tell. If we pause it and jump back, turn this off. Uh, they're both peaking at the same time. I just want to see a point where these are definitely, okay, you see that's lower, that one's higher, now we can spin it, and now it looks like the, hard to tell, but it looks like the taller one is the outside. So that would be, that's the outside, and this is the inside. So what that means is we always want this part to feel a little bit taller, so we could do that via our shader, which we could probably, uh, we could do that via our shading tab here. We would need some sort of gradient, we, or we could transfer it all to some sort of other mapping, just like we did this one, we could map it out that way. We could also uh, maybe just keep it simple, and I'm going to grab my cloner, and we can make a plane effector. I'm going to go to MoGraph, effector, born old, plane effector right there. Uh, at the top, I don't want it to move, I want it to scale on Y, and then make a fall off, a linear fall off that's traveling along X, X plus probably, uh, with maximum fall off, and then we can make that real big. Cool, so, well, actually we should probably make that about the length of the entire thing, because we'll have direct control over all of it. There we go, pretty close. So now I can tell that plane effector to scale to whatever degree I want. So we can say taller, 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 taller. So it'll start getting taller on that side. So now we turn our bend on, then you'll see we get nice and tall in the center, and then it's going to start spiraling down on the outside. Now, obviously, that's a little extreme. We can pull this down to something a little bit more reasonable. But now we've got a great little spiral going. Uh, I actually would uh, prefer that the white colors in the front, that should be, without even having to worry about remapping it, we can just go into our luminance effector shader, go into this gradient, right-click it and say invert knots, and that should automatically flip that around for us. And so now we see these lighter colored ones in the front. Uh, they're all stacking up really nice. Uh, there's probably a lot of angles this would look really cool on. Um, right now we got the ambient occlusion going. Uh, not anything particularly fancy, but you know, as you start layering these things up, it starts looking pretty cool. Uh, if we were to do maybe some simple things like throw, oh, let's use a tiny little bit of top coat maybe. Let's pop open top coat. Uh, this is on our object's material. Um, honestly, I, I want something simple. So why don't we just kill off the default specular and replace it with um, let's do gloss this time. Just some simple gloss on top of our white material. It's pretty straightforward there. Uh, I want to add an HDRI Studio so we have something to reflect. So Grayscale Gorilla HDRI Studio. Uh, once again, this is just so I can quickly have something to reflect. Um, we can grab, uh, I guess, everything here, the effectors and everything. I can put those all into that null. And I'm going to now scoot that null off to the right just so it's centered very imprecisely centered now. Uh, I can go to my studio, pop it open, find a nice indoor studio or an outdoor studio. Uh, I don't have a strong preference right now because we're just totally tinkering around. Um, honestly, we should probably even, I'm gonna insert my render settings here and I can now just from our, uh, Grayscale Gorilla HDRI Studio, I can just steal my render settings right from there. I'm gonna click on GI Medium. Uh, let's turn our ambient occlusion back on. Uh, we know that our size was a little bit better at 50, so I'm just gonna change that. So that should render pretty quick. We now have global uh, global illumination turned on. We've got a nice ambient occlusion going, which honestly might, let's try it without ambient, ambient occlusion because we might not need it. Uh, let's just go ahead and hit render because it should have uh, some nice GI going. So it's gonna have to think for a second here, but let's see how that looks. So right away we're getting some colorizing going on in our object based on the studio we picked, a nice bright 
yellow on one side, and it should be a pretty strong blue on the other. But we'd have to check our orientation, of course. Hey, <laughs> crossfader. Uh, you like that? I said this would be a quick one. But yeah, well, it started looking interesting, interesting so we started going further with it. Um, now, the thing is, because of the shapes are very kind of, there's no bends to it, there's no curves, it's going to be really kind of hard to catch reflections, or I guess reflections are going to be incredibly dependent on the angle that we're viewing this thing. So right now, I, we're not really seeing much in the reflections. They're going to be reflecting each other, but not so much... Um, not so much the scene. I guess maybe on the top a little bit. Like over here, you can see it's catching some blue, and that's based on reflection. Um, so to actually see reflections on this, we'd have to do something like uh, go to a nice low camera angle. And now this is bouncing, not hitting the floor. It's bouncing, and it's going to hit the sky, which means we should very strongly... Uh, let's just grab a little cross-section here. We should pretty strongly be getting some, some reflection going. Now, I guess it is based on the uh, studio, and it, we did pick a slightly blurry a slightly blurry reflection on there. So it's going to be hard to tell. Uh, just for the sake of illustrating, I'm going to turn off my color channel. We are purely seeing reflection now. So now everything we see, that is reflected. And it actually kind of looks cooler. <laughs> it looks cooler without the, uh, the luminance on. So we're going to go ahead and leave it that way because that looks pretty neat. Um, now I can maybe go to my HDRI studio, go to my floor. I just want this to be nice and dark. Um, Grab that. We'll make this one super dark as well. Maybe the outside a little bit more. Get a little auto vignette going in there. Um, so that's pretty neat. Now we could, you know, there's a lot of things. You, you, we could add different, um, some different noises, some different textures. We add some color. Um, let's see, something that might be neat is we can, we had our color and here's our color shader. Um, I wonder if we could do. I'm, I'm curious. I, I I don't use the variance shader a lot. Me and Chad were talking about it a little bit, and it made me start tinkering with it a little bit. But I wonder if we can just throw in the variance shader in here, <clears throat> in here by default. And I, I wonder if that would automatically work. I'm going to say random color and hit render. I want to see if that's just automatic. Okay, it does. The, the variance shader is kind of a quick way of getting something like the shader effector. Depends on the circumstance, but each of these is being counted as, as its own object. So uh, my reason for saying this is now we can do something like turn this nice and orange. And I want this one to be black. And I'm going to say a vast majority of, of these should be super dark. And mm, I'm still not secondary texture blend. I guess our base color, put a color in here and say it's black. Okay, there we go. So now what we can do is say, maybe we can even make a few lighter ones. So what we're going to do is get uh, some brighter ones, a little bit of orange, mostly black. So we hit render. We're still, we should still be getting that nice reflection on everything. But that's why we're getting, going to get these nice glowy pillars. And honestly, maybe we don't even want that many. Like just a few, a few standing out. So okay, we get the nice vibrant one sticking out there. And then on top of that, I'm going to tell this to multiply on top of the brightness. So I'm going to tell this to be a brightness of I don't know 300%. So now, uh, if we had a color channel in the GI, honestly, the GI is not doing anything now. We can go back in here and turn off GI because it, this is purely reflection based. Because no, if there's no color channel, there's nothing to run GI on. So this won't look any different, but should calculate faster. Uh, but now these are all super bright, which means they'll be caught by the reflections because they're 300% brightness. So those are all going to stick out real nice. And everything else is reflecting really, really pretty, uh, pretty sexy there. Um, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Let's view from the top. Oh, that's neat. I mean, from this perspective, I'd want to invert our shader effector, uh, which would be super easy, actually. We can go to our plane effector, go to fall off, and say invert. And now the inside is going to be shorter, and the outside will be taller. And now why don't we make a camera, and we will we will stretch out our... Uh, yeah, we're going to do a very short focal length, and then move in, and we should start getting this really extreme... Uh, some really extreme fisheye going. Pretty neat. 
So all this is just tinkering around. I think at this point, I'd probably even want that to be on a black background, which is crazy. I'm going to turn off our background there. I'm going to turn off my background here. Now it's going to be a black background. It can just hang out in the void. Oh, uh, I guess I also have to turn off the floor because we're looking right down at the floor. So now it's going to be in a black void. Those are all scaling. Honestly, what's interesting is uh, almost from this perspective, if you don't have a floor, then it automatically makes me not want to scale up, but out. Um, or in both directions, up and down. So all we'd have to do for that would be go to our cube and go to its coordinates and zero out its coordinates, which means now half is pushing down and half is pushing up. I'm going to turn off our textures. If I go to options, textures, we can get our kind of our color back here um, because the shaders were just showing black. Now, now it's pushing up and down, which means we might get some cooler perspectives from various angles than we would have otherwise. Um, it also means that we can have our shader effector we can just maybe even go to our cloner. I don't do this often, but we can go to our cloner and start saying, like, you guys should all be more powerful because now half is going up, half is going down. So we can push those further to get that contrast back in. But now it's going to fall off a little bit cooler. So, yeah, now it we'll just turn into finding a cool angle. Um, and keep in mind, this is all animated, so we can rewind. And I don't want to just hit... Okay, it's, it's re running relatively quick. Actually, it's running very quick. So now we're getting this cool motion. Everything's moving around. Now, um... The variance shader is not animated in any kind of way, which is maybe a, a, a downside to using this. Um, and I don't think there's any built-in way of, of kind of... We could change like stuff like probabilities and random seed, but this is going to be jumping from thing to thing to thing. That's no good. Um, so if we did drive that via a shader effector, just like we were driving everything else, and we could maybe have the glows moving from, from cube to cube to cube to cube. Um, but as it is, um, I think that should be working pretty well. I think that will... Yeah, that's going to be looking pretty neat. Um, and once again, I just arbitrarily picked a random HDR if you're spending more time like finding a really nice one, finding a perfect angle for it. Uh, now that we've got these glows, I feel like most of our light is coming via these nice bright beams, the nice bright pillars rather than the HDR. The HDR is definitely giving us this blue on the edge. It's giving us the yellow on the other edge. Um, but that's looking pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to leave this one there. Let's go ahead and save this in... Uh, SGSG yeah, Season 2, Episode 16, Raw Scene File, uh, Glowy Pillar, uh, Glowy Pillar Beams Bend. Sounds good to me.